Hey guys, Aaron Poletta here with the Cigar Lounge Cigar Talk Show, and today we are in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at the Tobacco Company Cigars. Let's go inside and take a look at what they got. All right guys, so we are inside this beautiful lounge. As you can see, it goes all the way back. A little dark back there from what I like. But we're gonna make our way up here and see what they got in the cases. So it looks like they got private humidors here. Nice collection of humidors. Some beautiful Arturo Fuente ashtrays. And for those of you who like me, who like ST DuPont, they got a whole case of ST DuPont lighters and what I can see is a few cutters inside. So if your pockets aren't deep enough to get the ST DuPont, up here at the counter they have a whole slew of other cutters and lighters, including some here by Perdomo. And actually there's some more ST DuPonts down in there too. So they do have quite a variety here. And as you can see, they have quite the selection of Davidoff, which I will be purchasing some of these today myself. Now, let's head into the humidor. So we're inside this humidor, and I gotta tell you, this is one of the few humidors that I've been in that just smells so beautiful. I mean, you, Evan, you can smell it. Nothing but cedar in here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, okay, we're gonna get away from the flavor stuff, because yuck. No offense to anybody. All right, starting off, I mean, it looks like they got a whole slew of these Perdomos. I'm, I'm happy to see the, the selection that they have of Padrones here is absolutely amazing. And I've had pretty much all this. So that's awesome. Let's keep moving down. Getting into the Rocky Patels. Wow, they have a lot of Rocky Patels, actually. 60s, these are fantastic. Disciples, one of the new ones that came out. White labels, you don't see those very often. Actually, one, two, three, four different sizes of those. Evan, you're gonna have to try one of those. All these white labels. And look at these boxes, if you can see it. These things are, I mean, just insane. All the rose gold. I mean, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at these little minis. Mini disciples. I kinda wanna buy one of those just because. Okay, moving down, wow. They have just got stuff galore in here. AJ Fernandez, the New Worlds, they've got Ashtons. Oh my, they've just got, what a wonderful selection they have here. And now we hit the Fuentes over here. Evan, you're a Fuente guy. I got a whole slew of Fuentes over here. They got the punches, we've got Cohibas in here. A nice section on Monte Cristo. So as you can see, it's just a fantastic uh, assortment of cigars in here. So actually, Jim is outside, one of the uh, other uh, workers in here, and he's actually going to go into pipes because we've had so many people talk about pipes, and I just I don't know anything about them. So we're going to have him explain different pipes. So for those of you who are interested in pipes, you're going to get the 411 right now. So let's head out there. Okay, guys, we're here with Jim. And Jim is the, according to Barry, the guru on the pipes in this store. So I have a question because I don't smoke pipes. Okay. I'm more into cigars. And a lot of the guys that ask me about pipes, I really can't answer their questions. Where do I start? That's my biggest thing is as, as someone who doesn't smoke pipes, guide me along here. Where should I start? Well, pipe tobacco goes and pipe smoking goes back for centuries. What it is, you start at an entry level pipe which is this, which ranges between 25 and $35. So, so these are entry level pipes? These are entry level pipes. They're all wood, but they're machine made. Machine? Machined. Okay. Okay. So in the factory, they'll run them through a, a, a router and, and they'll make, you know, they'll stamp out X numbers, but they're not handmade. So almost like CNC machine, it just exactly. machine carves it out. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. To start, 
this is where I would suggest the new pipe smoker to start to see if he likes it and what he doesn't like, like the shape, like the way it feels in his hands. Right. That's a good place so to So he's not just spending several hundred dollars no, on something no. he's going to turn around and go, I don't want this anymore, Ab I wasted my money. Absolutely not. My suggestion is you start ground level and move on. Smoke it, clean it, let it cool, smoke it again and see if that's what you really like. Now, you, now you said cool it. Do you, you have to, how do you cool a pipe? Just let, not to keep smoking bowl after bowl after bowl. Oh. Just let the wood cool. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. Okay. All right. Then, second option is, if you're a pipe smoker and you want to increase in the value of a pipe, it'll be all in the uh, wood. The wood will be briar. Or, now there's a lot of olive wood. Briar is becoming an extremely rare wood to get. Now, what's the difference between the woods? Because like, you said olive wood versus briar wood, and I mean, what are the, what's the wood in, in the entry levels? That's going to be an olive wood. Okay. So, the, when, so when you move up in scale... Then you start to get into briar. Okay, now is it is it a harder wood or is yes. it... Yes. So it's a hard... Okay, yes. okay. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm real cur curious before we go, and, and I have to ask because me and Evan really don't know anything about it, and he's more interested in getting the pipes than I am. The insides here... What is that, and I don't know if you can see inside that, what is that coated with? Is that coated it's in? It's just scored. It's scored so that they burn all the dust and any of the dirt that's out of that. So that's just... They, tre they treat that burning, that scoring, will help preserve the wood in that. Gotcha. Okay, so now we're moving on to, we'll call mid-range? Yes. Mid-range, okay. Explain the mid-range. Okay, it, the mid-range pipe is going to be a little bit fancier like so would be a little bit better than this. There's different uh, cosmetics on pipes. One of the things that I have found over the years with pipe smokers is they like the way it feels in their hand. When he bought his pipe and he looked at the 20 pipes that were out here, right. it was the one that felt good in his hand that's the one yeah because because i've noticed that you know the shapes are obviously different i mean when yes. you have something like this this is more what i call like an old man pipe you know because they have it hanging that's out of bend. their mouth and then you have something like this which is more like a i'm classy right pipe so so it's so a really it comes down to feel next exactly okay yes it does then when you as you start to move away from that you start to get into pipes like this that are freehand. What this means is somebody sat down at a, at a wood bench and made this pipe. They carved it. They carved it. This is. This so that also goes into the price. That'll go into the price. So it's not just the wood, it's oh, the no. craftsmanship it's that the goes craftsmanship. in with it. It's the craftsmanship, yeah. And what these are is one of a kind. That's all you know, and, and it's funny because I, I watched um, a segment, well, my wife and I watched a segment on um, how it's made, I think it was. And it showed that on these hand done pipes, yeah. they'll go through like five blocks of wood they, they to hopefully do. get the one that doesn't break or have any defects inside the wood. So that would also explain the, the price difference. If you, with the original block of wood will be about this big. Okay. And then they, he starts, he or she starts to, to work it down. And this is all Italian briar. And you uh, said that's getting harder to find. Harder to find. And I'll tell you who does excellent work are Danish pipe makers, uh, the Norwegian pipe makers. There's local pipe stores around here. There's there's a gentleman called uh, Caldwell, who's only an hour away from here. He's been in the pipe making business forever and ever. Matter of fact, we send all our repairs to him. A super person. Nice. So so you have, okay. So you have. Your and price, you have your price point. Mid price. Yep. And you have your your feel. And then when you get to this level where you're smoking a pipe all the time. Yep. Now you said something about letting it cool. Um, so here, here's a question. Here's the nerdy side of me wanting to ask you this. Is it okay to have multiple so you can do like a Monday pipe, a Tuesday pipe? I mean, it can get quite expensive if, doing that. If, if you become a full-time pipe smoker, that's what pipe smokers do. They'll have a series of pipes and they will not smoke the same pipe 
two days in a row. They just let the wood. I like how he pointed at you when he said <laughs> full-time pipe smoker. So you're going to be a full-time pipe smoker? <laughs> We're going to drive all the way back here to get this? No, that's, that's good to know because, um, you know, I don't know about pipes, but my personality is if I'm going to do something, I'm jumping full force into it. But I, I also don't want, although I don't mind spending money on quality and luxury, I also don't want to spend it and not enjoy not it enjoy anymore. It. Yeah, so that's I, good to know that you could. My suggestion would be to a new person in, wanting to get into a pipe, try it and see if you like it and then move on. If you like tobacco, if you like pipes, if you like the essence of a, a pipe smell is, can totally change, you know, the ambiance of a room. Right. Well, that's good to know. Um, Cleaning. Yes, that was going to be my next thing because, you know, that's, it's not like a cigar when, it, where when I'm done with it, I'm done with it. you you got to clean these, don't you? Yeah. My, this is, it's real simple. You take, take it apart like so, and there'll be moisture in there, obviously, from the saliva in your mouth and everything. All you do is you run a pipe cleaner through it this way and run a pipe cleaner through it that way. And it just cleans it out. And it cleans it out. So you don't get all that extra soot nope, and everything nope, sitting in nope. there. And the, my suggestion is please clean it after every pipe smoke or every other pipe smoke. Okay. So then you're always having optimal taste. Optimal maximum ta maximum yep. taste. Okay. So we found our pipe. Now what do I do? I, I found my pipe. I'm going to go mid-range. Let's say okay. I get this one. What's the next step? Then I'm going to ask you, do you have a preference in tobacco? As far as flavor, boldness? Yes. Um, flavor, boldness. What have you smoked in the past? Well, let me, let me do this. Instead of asking those questions, let me... Let's talk tobacco. I love tobacco. Okay. Let's talk tobacco. Smell that. Smells... What do you smell? Molasses, barnyard, straw, musty... Smells tasty, actually. It smells it, more medium, though, like it, medium it, in flavor. It is. It's a medium blend cigar. There's, I got it. I got there's it right. a, There's a Latakia in here. There's a Virginia Natural. There's a Dark Virginia in here. And that's how this particular, this is not going to be highly aromatic. Okay. Let me show you an aromatic. It's too bad we didn't have smell of vision This is an aromatic. This is just the Huma pack to keep my tobacco fresh. Oh, wow. <clears throat> smells like a candle. Exactly. That's what you're going to get with a tobacco like this. You're going to get a lot of flavor and a lot of so, smell. So the more aromatics we have, the more flavor we're going to have as well. It, it, now here we go. It goes back to your taste buds. The pH balance in your mouth is going to be different than the pH balance in my mouth. To me... I probably wouldn't like a real high aromatic. I do like the fireside. So there so, you go in so, the taste. So kind of same thing on, pi on on purchasing your pipe is start small and work your way up. Absolutely. So, so it all comes down to now we got to test everything. That's what we just talked about. Is that why you spent almost an hour over here? Yeah. That's <laughs> why, and you know what? That's why we're here. Here's, a, here's one that's an aromatic that's not highly... This is just a medium. Smell that. Okay. This is called golden honey. The the taste is going to be, because you're a cigar smoker, it's going to be between that mild medium flavor, that mild medium taste to you. Okay. Okay, uh, that's good to know. Now you, when we go to get the you weigh, you I weigh, weigh everything? everything on this ounce scale. We sell it by the ounce. It's four dollars no. and twenty-five cents an ounce. So no matter what flavor, what strength, doesn't matter. It's if all. You want it mixed? I'll mix it. it. It doesn't matter. Oh, so people, so people will actually mix tobaccos together. We just did. We just did a cherry with a little hint of vanilla in it. That so you gonna... can so you can customize. Oh, absolutely. That's fantastic. My blend that I concocted here one day is I use the black Cavendish with some vanilla, Fab just fabulous taste for me. That's, for you. that's a blend that I made myself. You know, okay, so, so you come in, you pick your pipe, 
you try a plethora of flavors and now you get creative with it like everybody else and you just say, I want to try a little of this, a little of this, a little of this. That's exactly And you create right. your own blend. You can create your own blend. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, see, that's something it's I a, didn't know. You know what? It, 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 pipe smoking is a world unto its own. I mean, it's just completely different than cigars and the, uh, the websites that you can go on and join Pipe Smokers of America and the local. I mean, it, it's a nice, nice. Okay, way to so smoke. the last thing I have for you, because I'm a, I'm an accessorizing kind of cigar smoker. I love the Duponts. I love different lighters, different cutters. How do we like this? Because you see some old timers, and no offense to anybody for age, but you see some old timers that they are matches only, and then you see some younger guys that are putting soft you flames. Can, okay. But then other guys that are like, oh, we're torching the hell out of everything. That's really a good point. That's a, that's a great question. I'm glad we got to that point. You take a pipe like such. If you, if you look at, the, if you look at the, the work that's been put in. Because this is kind of beveled off here a little bit right, too. Right, right, because it's freehand. And what I personally recommend to people when they start smoking, whether it's this pipe, this pipe, or this pipe, is not to use a four burner butane torch lighter to light the tobacco. Because what will inevitably happen, you'll start to burn. So you're gonna ruin the pipe. Thank you. You will, you will, you will destroy, over time you will destroy this. Um, can you do me a favor real quick and grab one of those um, three torches over there? So just, I mean, most people know what most people know what um, torch lighters are, but you're talking about a four. Or a three. Uh, yeah, or a three. So I'm going to show that real quick. So, Evan, grab this real quick. We just want to show the top of it. Okay, so this, this is a double. Okay, so, you, so inside, you see the two burners, Evan? That's, so that's a double. So you're talking not to use four, one, one that has three four. Three or four. If okay. you're going to use one, it would only be... A like a single. single torch and I prefer when people ask what they should use I like two things if you want a lighter you have to use a soft flame lighter now a soft flame lighter is going to be so so essentially we're using a, a match but it's it's a right okay yeah soft that's soft flame because that's not going to burn the wood you can put that right on on the tobacco. Okay. So if you can do anything, stay away from the torch, use matches or the soft flame and... But when you're talking to people in my age bracket, those old time smokers, <laughs> here's... So... There you go. These are the matches that they these, like to use. These are the matches we give to our folks. It's a... And that would go nicely down inside here, wouldn't burn stick, anything. Cedar stick match. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll just let it burn down a little bit, knock the tip off of it, and light your tobacco. Nice. And you're all set to go. So, there you have a little rundown on your pipes, your entry level, your mid-range, your tobaccos, how to light it, how to clean it, how to take care of it. Yeah. Did we miss anything? Uh, are you going to have a bourbon with them? I don't drink anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, okay. I would. <laughs> okay, but that's yeah, that's so same that's, thing. So same thing in cigars. You know, find your beverage of choice, pair it well, and enjoy. Pair it well, and, exactly. There you have it. Pipes 101. If we get anybody else asking for more, we'll come back and we get you some more why? information that's from you. That's why we have the lounge. You know, we have pipe smokers all the time. We have cigar smokers. Cigar smokers are 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 our, our premium customers, but we do have pipe smokers come in, and you know we're BYOB. Enjoy yourself. Come relax. That's what it's all about. You know, you don't smoke a cigar or you don't smoke a pipe. You enjoy a pipe. You enjoy a cigar. Yeah, you smoke cigarettes. You don't smoke pipes or cigars. You enjoy them. That's a good way of putting it. Enjoy it. Cool. There you have it. Uh, we actually got lucky because... Yes, you did. Uh, Greg himself is coming in, which we need to head back there and get that interview. So we'll see you back there. Hey, guys. We have the distinct privilege of interviewing a man who has been in the cigar industry and not just been in the cigar industry but as the president of the PCA who is all about our rights and loves cigars Mr. Greg Zimmerman himself everybody Greg Greg say hi hi everybody nice to be here 
Uh, we, are, we are actually in Greg's lounge uh, here in Harrisburg, and we did some filming where we showed showed you all the lounge, uh, checked out some of the products that he has also in the humidor. But now we have the pleasure of sitting down, and I have a few questions personally that I want to ask you if you can take some time with us. Sure. Um, as a cigar enthusiast myself and who travels specifically for cigars, where did your passion start? Because it's where we're going to get to is the the position that you're in, you know, with the PCA, but where yeah. did you start? Because that's uh, always a fascination it, for me. It was kind of an easy one for me. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of uh, people's passions are born in their life experiences. And um, as a child, growing up, my grandfather, who was uh, an icon in this area, people really looked up to him, respected him, uh, well known. I was a cigar guy and I loved to go over and visit with him. Um, you know, there'd be all these characters and he was a cigar guy, had a store. It was kind of uh, like today's modern convenience store, uh, like a, a Rudders or Sheets or, you know, one of those types of Wawa 7-Eleven. But uh, back in the day in, in kind of these steel towns and uh, uh, coal areas, the convenience store, there was like a convenience store almost in every little block. So he used to sell tobacco products, uh, sold cigarettes by single when you could. Uh, a long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> uh, cigars, you could buy your groceries there, ice cream, you know, and it was a kind of a social meeting area. So it's almost uh, kind of like a, the modern day barber shop where people gather, you know, c converse about, you know, topics of the day, politics, sports. Uh, Which still actually continues to this day. And I, I think it's one of the things that I do enjoy about going to different lounges is that you, you just meet brothers and sisters of the leaf that you never know what conversation you're going to strike with them. Oh, yeah. And it's, you know, from, from back then it was more of a relaxation thing. Well, it's still like that today. Yeah. I mean, decades and decades later. Yeah, it's, uh, cigar lounges are a very unique, uh, I don't know if you want to say dichotomy. In, in today's world, I mean, there are very few pl places where people can set aside their differences come together with a common passion and get along. It just doesn't happen. I mean, you look at the politics, especially right now, we're dealing with the midterms, you can see, uh, you know, how divisive things are uh, politically. But even here, like, we can get in political discussions, but, uh, you know, people understand that there's differences, but we still have this in common. And, right. and it doesn't start wars. Like, that's, no. that's the one thing. Like, if you're out on the street with somebody, especially in today's age, you know, you could get into fights with people over your political beliefs. Oh, yeah. But when you're in here... Um, all parties alike can yeah. sit next to it and just be friends because we yeah. all share something in common. Been doing this 30 years, and uh, I, this is probably less than what would happen in, in the general population. But uh, I've only ever seen two fight physical fights. I mean, there have been some like yeah, heated discussions, but and and one was completely didn't have anything to do with the uh, topic. It was uh, uh, an issue between two people outside of the store, but. Uh, I mean, that, so for 30 years, you know, and uh, uh, a lot of diverse conversation, diverse people. In fact, um, in my shop over in, in Le Moyne, which is our main shop, um, is we had a, I was sitting up at uh, this smaller area, that we smaller lounge. We had two lounges over there. And um, we were sitting there in a discussion, and one of the guys stopped, and he said, he goes, do you realize, he goes, I'm Jewish. And he goes, you're Catholic, pointing to me. And the other guy, the third guy in the conversation was uh, a Muslim. And he was like, we got a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew all sitting here at the, at the table smoking a cigar, and nothing's wrong. You know? almost, sounds like a start to a joke. Yeah, it does, right. right. Yeah. The Jew and this Muslim and this Christian were in a cigar they shop, walk into, and nothing happened. And nothing happened, right, yeah. Lamest joke in the world, right? right. But no, that's, that's exactly yeah. what it is. And you know, I... I took my certified cigar sommelier tobacconist um, test, got my diploma, and one of the things in there was these are considered luxury items. Well, nowadays, luxury does not have to be expensive. I mean, there are brands, and I've seen some of the brands that you carry. And as a matter of fact, we did a quite an extensive walkthrough of your humidor. And, uh, I mean, you can get luxury sticks for $8 a piece and sit. I mean, it's oh, the cheap, yeah. cheapest therapy you'll ever get. Yeah, even less. Yeah. yeah, even less in some cases. Yeah, um, I mean it's it's, fa it's fantastic that you've been doing it so long. So I guess my main question now is, 
how did you get to the position that you're in with the PCA? Or I should start with a question before that is what made you get involved with the PCA? Because you know, that's big. I mean, when I lived in Las Vegas, I mean, I, I knew when the cigar guys came to town because them hotels flooded when Act, it happened. Yeah, yeah. And they come from all over the world. I, I think where it started, um, I mean, it was a very fortuitous journey getting here. I mean, I, my family was in construction. I went to college for engineering. So my path was kind of set in doing construction and I'll cut through a lot of, I mean, we can go in, in more in depth if you, if you want to, but um, way back in the early years during the boom, I decided to make, I was always interested in cigars. Uh, like I, I said earlier, uh, I always associated my grandfather with cigars. So my first one was a Parodi that he used to smoke, De Nobili, that was uh, the Italian dry cured cigars. Uh, my grandfather smoked those. Yeah, <laughs> knocked me off my, uh, off my feet, but uh, I stuck with, always loved the smell. And um, so in the early 90s, um, I was passionate about cigars. My first premium cigar that I smoked was, uh, can still remember, was the uh, fall of 1985, October of 85. I was, had some of my brothers and cousins over for a card game and uh, I went to a local cigar shop and this guy had come back from New York and he said, Greg, he goes, you like cigars. He goes, you got to try this cigar. He goes, it's called a Macundo. And I was like, all right. So I go to a local cigar shop, and I say to the tobacconist, I said, uh, do you carry Macundo? And he goes, do you mean Macanudo? Yeah, and I was like, well, I don't know, I guess. And uh, he goes, yeah. And it, at the time, uh, I wanted a big, you know, biggest cigar you could get. And at that time, there was no 60 ring gauge cigars. And it, but a Prince Philip was, was kind of like a... Back in the day, I think we referred to that Vitola to Double Corona. So uh, I got one. I went home, and I, that's that's when it all started for me. I said, man, this is – because before that, I mean, we I always – like I said, I would smoke a Denoble or a Parodi or, uh, you know, some of the mass market stuff that you would buy, you know, in a drugstore uh, or a grocery store or something like that. So uh, that was the first cigar, and that kind of uh, – I lit the fire, I lit my passion, and uh, I went back to that same ta tobacconist probably um, a week later, and I said, I love that cigar, but I don't know that 285 is in my price range. You know, I'm just starting out, I'm a young guy. Back then, it was, like I said, it was under three bucks for the cigar today that's, I don't know, what's a Prince Philip? Probably closer to 12 bucks, yep. something like that. And, um, he goes, yeah, I got these Dominican bundles. They have a Connecticut shade wrapper, 20 cigars in a bundle, 13 bucks for a bundle. I said, let me try that. And I was, so then I started smoking bundle cigars, worked my way up through. Uh, but anyhow, so in the 90s, when the boom started to take off, I had a local tobacconist ask me to build him a walk-in humidor. I was like, what's a walk-in humidor? You know, and he goes, well, it's a room where we're going to keep cigars. You know, this, this is, you know, right at the beginning of the boom. Used, you, used to be like when you went into a cigar store, you might have a couple cabinets uh, or like jewelry cases that would have cigar boxes right. in that somebody would put some humidification, like a little uh, oasis brick, like the florists use. They would right. dampen that, put it in there to keep it kind of humidified. So I built this walk-in humidor. He had customers that wanted uh, uh, wanted to uh, modify cabinets or build humidors at home, so I started doing that. I took my, I decided to make some prototypes and take them to, at the time, PCA was referred to as the RTDA. Before PCA it was IPCPR, and before IPCPR was RTDA. We were founded in 1933. That's the association that is now the PCA today. Um, so I took my. Um, prototypes to the 94 trade show. I think it was Orlando. I can't remember the exact location. Um, but anyhow, I think it was down in Florida and Orlando. Uh, I designed a humidifier to go with it because at the time you couldn't get them because of the boom. Everybody was buying all that stuff up. I ended up selling those things all over the world. And uh, the guy that I originally built that walk-in humidor went out of business. I opened a store uh, just for a place that I could go to enjoy my cigars because I went to his place. His lounge is about as big as where we're sitting right now. There's three chairs. It's not that big. 
No, and on a Saturday, you'd have three guys in, in these high back chairs, and behind them, there'd be three guys with their elbows on the chair waiting for that guy to stand up because they were in next. And there would be a few other people standing around. But uh, so when he, uh, he went out of business, uh, opened a shop, uh, I have a lot of family here in PA that's in politics. Uh, so I was always politically kind of connected and being here in Harrisburg. And I basically got into um, advocating for premium cigars here in Pennsylvania, really out of self-preservation. And uh, I registered as a lobbyist. And um, so I was a lobbyist here in Pennsylvania for just advocating for my own personal, like I said, self-preservation, protect my business. And um, at the time, some of the board members at the RTDA uh, must have got my name, you know, knew that I was politically active here in PA and said, hey, would you like to serve on the board? This was probably about 2008 now. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll, sure, I'll come on. So I did a three-year as a regular board member, and then I was active enough that the, they, they thought that I should go through the executive committee and ask me if I would run for that. Um, and you had to be on the board to run for the executive committee, and that's a 15-year run. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a commitment. So you got two years as treasurer at the time. Two years as treasurer, two years, no, I'm sorry, two years secretary, two years treasurer, two years second vice president, two years first vice president, two years president, and two years as the ex officio. Uh, we since have lim eliminated uh, one of the vice president spots um, just because uh, the commitment and the workload is now, back before 2008, S chip, you're familiar with S chip? That's the federal tax that uh, the government first put on to subsidize uh, uh, low-income uh, families' uh, insurance for children. Um, and it was at the time 41 cents. And it was the first time that we had to activate nationally, on a national level. I mean, you always had local things, but it, you didn't have the smoking laws that you have today. I mean, you could pretty much go in any bar you wanted to, sit down, light up a cigar, pipe, Cigarette, obviously. I, I mean, I remember going into McDonald's when I was a kid with my grandmother, and there were those little yeah, there was tin little tin ashtrays, ashtray with the M you know, in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. I remember that. Uh -huh. And then I'm, I was living in Las Vegas when they finally did away with that. And there's one place that we went out there was called the Four Kegs, and they didn't want to eliminate it, so they built up the wall, the glass walls around the smoking area, so everybody could still see each other. I remember yeah. when all that happened. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, it, it's cool that you that you got into that and then pursued it because, you know, this industry is constantly under attack, mm -hmm. and they like to pair cigars in, in the same category as cigarettes, and that's not it's not the same thing. No. And I'm not saying it as somebody who sm I'm somebody who had quit smoking cigarettes, quit vaping, still smoke cigars. It's not the same. Right. So I, I don't like that we're in it. So it's cool that you you fight for that. That, yeah. that is fantastic. So I mean that that, that you you're back to your original question that that's how I got it involved in, in at the time RTDA then we changed the name we felt that tobacco the word tobacco had a negative connotation it kind of lumped like just to your point you know all tobacco products were the same and they're not they're used differently uh, age of initiation is completely different cigarettes average age of initiation is around 15 years old. Uh, our product that we're smoking right now, you're talking mid-30s. Right. Um, Until you could fully appreciate the, the complexities of the flavors that you get. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I remember I was smoking when I was, cigars when I was 19, and it didn't taste the same as it does now. I appreciate the, the flavors. Now. Yeah, 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 because you probably didn't understand. Right. And you, your palate wasn't educated at the time, maybe. Uh, I know you're in the food side, so you you're probably got a leg up on, on most people. And... Uh, you know, that, that's the thing that I think people, sorry, it might be causing some feedback there. Um, Everybody touches the mic. Yeah. Uh, you know, people need to educate their palates, and I think that they do naturally, organically, but there's tools out there for people. If you don't understand what cardamom, that sense of cardamom on your tongue or in, in your olfactory sense, senses, uh, you can't associate it when you're, trying a food or you, you name clove, cinnamon, vanilla, all those different flavors or descriptors that we use to talk about 
uh, flavor profiles in tobacco or in, into premium cigars. If you've never tasted or experienced, had your uh, any experiences with it, then you, you can't relate to it. Right. And you don't know. You know there's something there you like, but you just can't explain what it is. Right. And that's one of the reasons, like when I do my uh, reviews, I, I try to be very cautious when I write reviews. I don't put anything negative in there like, oh, this was bad, never smoke this. I try to tell people what I'm tasting and the experience I'm getting. Yeah. It's up to you whether or not you want to try it. Yeah. But I want to throw those out there. What now, you don't like, I might love. Exactly. Like, yeah. like I make no hiding, and anybody who's ever seen these episodes know that I can't stand infused cigars. And I'm not saying anything bad about the companies that make them. But I, they're not for me. They're not for my palate. I prefer right. natural cigars. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also the, the appreciation of it, too. I mean, you think of how many hands. I mean, we've said this numerous times on different episodes. How many hands touch this? How old is this? Mm -hmm. from, from the seed, the cultivation, the aging, the fermenting, the aging again, the rolling, the aging again. I mean, there's so to much. our shelf, you're talking six years, probably. Yeah. And, and on an average cigar. Yeah, and that's not even when you're getting into to companies Super. like Fuente and Padron that, I mean, they start with 10-year-old tobacco in some cases. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, th this store that you have here, we found it by sheer happenstance because it's close to our hotel. Um, I'm so glad we walked in here. Um, your, your guy, Barry, that I talked to was fantastic, very warming and welcoming when we walked through the door. And, you know, a lot of people don't really look at us that way when we come in because we've got cameras and stuff like, hey, we want to film. Totally open to it. Checked with you. You were cool with it. Then dropped the bomb of who you were. I'm like, I got to get this guy. Um, Jim was awesome with, you know, explaining the pipes to us. I mean, you have a fantastic setup here. And I, I say anybody who's in the Harrisburg area or if you're anywhere close, stop down here because they've got it all. And I've never seen such a massive collection of Rocky Patel. And I am a huge fan of Rocky Patel, although some of his stuff is lacking when it comes to the draw sometimes. But I make no hiding. I love Rocky Patel. Yeah. And you, you've got just so much of it down you here. Should, uh, you should visit our Lemoyne store. I, the, that humidor is about three times as large as this one. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, I have we, to go there, Evan. We have uh, kind of a, I mean, we have all the same representation as far as manufacturers, but we just don't go as deep here just because of the space issue, but uh, we, we do cram a lot in there. Yeah, well, that's good. We might have to go there before we before we head over because uh, we're heading to Philadelphia next uh, to go see the Grand Lodge uh, oh, okay. while we're over there because we're both Freemasons. So we, yeah, love, yeah. we love to travel and, and see different lodges, but we also go to different lounges, too. Um, anything you want to tell anybody out there about your store or about you in general? I mean, say it because it, I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled that I was able to to meet you and to speak with you, but if there's anything you want to tell them, I mean, uh, the more knowledge we can give to people, and that's the purpose yeah. of this show, is to try to educate and and see, um, you know, can we can we broaden your horizons when it comes to, to cigars? Because mm -hmm. you know, the main difference that I try to tell people when it comes to cigars versus cigarettes is, these are leaves, that's chemicals. You're gonna get more enjoyment out of this than you are. That's a quick fix, this is a relaxation, this is a conversation. Yeah. And your patrons are fantastic in here. Matter of fact, I've handed out more cigars in the last two days than I have anywhere else <laughs> because these guys are just, they rub me the right way. I'm like, here, have this one, have this one. Yeah. I mean, you could almost consider this product as an organic product. I mean, Carlito Fuente obviously describes it best. It's nothing more than the meeting of earth, uh, moisture, rain, um, sunlight and, and, and a plant. I mean, there's nothing else that goes into it other, other than time, care, and love. That's it. Yeah, the the aging process. You know, obviously, kind of develops some of the unique characteristics of the flavor profiles, um, and each manufacturer does that different. And uh, so, as a consumer, I would say, you know, this isn't something you want to just get into and then rifle through cigar you want to take the time to enjoy the product understand what it is understand what you like um you know people a lot of times guys will come in all the time i'm a new smoker uh i like mild cigars and you know obviously i'll direct them to you know i'll ask them what cigars they they like that i can maybe make some references off of that but I can't tell you how many times a, a guy will come in and say, I only smoke Connecticut Shade, 
I only like super mild cigars. And I say, do me a favor once. Try this Padron and then tell me what you think. Is it, is it strong? And I say, I don't want to give you any. You just try it and you tell me what you think. If you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. And they'll come in and go, my God, that cigar was exquisite. So you don't really understand. You don't know what you don't know. You know, so until you don't know it. Until you don't know, right? Yeah. You've heard that numerous times. So, um, you know, explore, uh, have fun with it, enjoy it. Don't, you know, uh, this isn't something that you know you got to have a fix. Like I had COVID a year, uh, almost exactly a year ago, and I, and I obviously I, I, I'm in this every day, so I I enjoy cigars. I'll smoke a cigar usually at least one every day. Um, I went 29 days didn't have a desire to even put a cigar to my mouth because you know it just didn't feel right right. and it did it obviously didn't taste right and after that i lost my taste and smell for a couple months i was pissed off i I, I bet because i i couldn't taste them so so for me to to the point earlier it's not like other tobacco you don't i don't need to have it you know and that's what i'm not addicted to it that's okay mom that's what I tell my mom all the time. I, I don't have to have this. Yeah. I choose to have this. I yeah. enjoy my cigars. Yeah. But there have been times I've been sick and I don't smoke one. Hell, it might even be a couple of days afterwards. I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. Just, right. I'm too tired today. I, I don't want one. Yeah. Which is good every once in a while to cleanse your palate and then start fresh. You wouldn't I, believe what these taste like after a few days. Oh, smoking. I know. It, I just did that the, uh, last week. <clears throat> Someone said, you're not smoking a cigar today. I said, no, I'm cleansing my palate. And they go, what do you mean? I like, you know, after a while, you know, it. You, you do something enough, you just kind of take it for granted and you don't appreciate it. You take a couple of days off once in a while and then come back to it. It's like, oh, my God, you're reborn again. Yep. You know? I have a, a really good friend of mine. Uh, we refer to him as Mr. K. He's kind of the man behind the blurred face. Uh, one of these days I'll get him on an episode, but he does it every once in a while. He'll take a few days off and he comes back and he's like, that opus just, it's, it's sang to me the whole time. Yeah. And it's, it's good to cleanse your palate. Um, Mr. Zimmerman, I, I appreciate you you taking the time. Um, it was, it was a true pleasure. honor to have you in here. I, I really yeah, my pleasure. It. Yeah. If you guys are in the Harrisburg area, he's got two locations. I will put those on the screen uh, at towards the end of this segment. Uh, we would like to thank your staff and your patrons. They were absolutely nice. Appreciate you coming down, guys. Come down, check it out. You 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 won't be wasting your time.